Carolina Crusher. Gary Porter's Giant Chevrolet, which has done incredibly well in only its first full season of U.S. Hobbit Association competition. Bennett Clark, another relative newcomer to the U.S. Hobbit Association trail with the powerful Chevrolet Clydesdale. These two newcomers will battle a field of veterans. Stand by. ESPN, the world leader in motorsports coverage, presents Speed World. I just ran the steps that made Rocky famous. But this week, going to take center stage will be another super power sport, monster truck racing. We're going to see some of the vehemence of monster truck racing going head-to-head -head and side-by-side -side awesome competition. Welcome, everybody, to Tampa Stadium in Tampa, Florida. I'm Brett Kuttner, and in just a moment, it's flame-throwing, multi-engine mayhem as the ultimate tractor-pulling machines from around the country get ready to do battle at the 7th Annual Super Bowl of Motorsports. First Blood, Bigfoot, and Carolina Crusher are among the eight major monsters on the battlefield today. It should be sheer mayhem. Monster Truck Challenge Series. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Spectrum in Philadelphia. We are only a few minutes away from the start of qualifying for another U.S. Hobart Association Monster Truck National Championship Series event. And in this qualifying round, one driver against the clock individually to determine qualifying position. It'll be led off by John Pyatt, the man who finished number four in the world last year in the Sunoco-sponsored Bigfoot Ford of St. Louis, Missouri's Bob Chandler. Smooth as glass for the Bigfoot Ford. 2.161 seconds. 2.16, that'll set the pace here in the qualifying round as Ford takes the pole at this point. But on the line, Buffalo, New York's own John Kwasniewski in the aptly named Buffalo Tremor Chevrolet. Kwasniewski, an excellent run, getting a little bit sideways. Listen to this. He had to go quicker than 2.161 seconds. He goes 2.166 seconds. Five thousandths of a second slower than Bigfoot. But boy, if it's any indication, we could have some close racing here at the Spectrum. That'll bring out Mike Beeler's immaculate Chevrolet called the Wrecker. He has been a regular on the 1991 U.S. Hobbit Association National Event Tour and has been doing quite well with a homegrown machine. Two point four two seconds will not unseat the Bigfoot Ford from the number one spot. But now it's Michael Vodder's chance in the beautiful black stallion Ford, always one of the most immaculate machines on the U.S. Harvard Association tour. It could win any truck show in the country, let alone monster truck contest. 2.02 seconds will put the Black Stallion Ford number one. But here's one for the Chevrolet fans. Gary Porter's North Carolina-based Carolina Crusher. Now, moving forward to stage, keep in mind that Gary Porter is in his first year of following the full U.S. Hobbit Association Camel World Tour. Although he's no newcomer to the world of monster trucks, this is his first legitimate shot at a Camel U.S. Hobbit Association World Championship this season. The visor comes down. He's ready. An incredible shot for Gary Porter. The mark to beat was 202. The crusher runs 1.94 seconds. Number one qualifier by eight hundredths of a second. And now Rob Fuchs gets his chance with the first blood forward, and he could get it. And the worst possible sound for Fuchs' first blood board, absolutely no question, that was a transmission problem. You heard the motor sound fine as it left the starting line, but no more than 10 feet into the run, the RPM count went to the moon as the transmission comes apart, and Fuchs will not be able to get this thing off the course under its own power, I don't believe. That'll bring out Bennett Clark and the Clydesdale, the bright pink Chevrolet that is always a threat at any U.S. Hobbit Association event. The supercharged, big block rat motor machine now inches forward to the line.
Clydesdale Chevrolet, but he'll land it safely. The elapsed time for Bennett Clark, 2.11 seconds. That'll be good right now for the number three position in the field. With the final qualifying effort pulling to the line, the Super Winch Jersey Outlaw has to go quicker than 1.94 seconds for the pole. He must go quicker than Bigfoot's 2.161 second run to get in the top half of the field. A beautiful pass, hard on the brakes. He'll stop it in time. The elapsed time, 1.99 seconds. It'll qualify number two behind the Carolina Crusher. And the Black Stallion Ford takes the third spot. Clydesdale number four, Bigfoot down to number five. Coming up, we've got more monster truck action from the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Side-by-side -side eliminations. Stay with us. We're back at the Spectrum in Philadelphia as we get ready for the first side-by-side -side battle of the event. It'll be your number one qualifier kicking things off, unfortunately, for his opponent with a bye run. Actually, it's good news for Gary Porter. But bad news for Rob Fuse, who blew that transmission during qualifying and has now given word that he will be unable to make the first round. So it'll be a free ride into the semis. And obviously, Gary Porter plays it smart. He will save the equipment for the next actual race. The incredible Bigfoot of Bob Chandler, the man who started the monster truck revolution back in 1974, and his young driver, John Pyant, pulling out to face Michael Vodders from Baltimore, Maryland, in his home-built black stallion Ford f-350 the big surprise here however is the fact that the black stallion out qualified bigfoot by two positions and what a battle it's black stallion the Clydesdale ended up number four qualifier the record was number seven the difference between the two in qualifying 31 hundredths of a second that's a pretty tall order for the record team But it looks like the Chevrolet, the Clydesdale, will advance. John Kwasniewski in the Buffalo Tremor Chevrolet now backs up to the starting line. His opponent in this particular matchup will be Mike Wine and the Jersey Outlaw. Line is staged now. Kwasniewski in the Buffalo Tremor inches forward. Ford and Chevrolet in New York and New Jersey here in Pennsylvania. A flash of fire from the outlaw. Kwasniewski will take the win. Chris Chapman was closer to the machines down on the floor. Chris, did there seem to be any indication that, uh, before that explosion that there was a problem? I know earlier today, Mike White and the Jersey Outlaw crew, they worked feverishly trying to put a new transmission back in the truck, but I don't believe that's what happened this time. Mike, could we get just a quick word with you? What's it look like the problem is? Crank just broke off the head of it. That's an expensive problem. $10,000. That's got to just re really be devastating to you. What's going through your mind at this point? Uh, a little disgusted, but kind of happy. Friday night we came out, we won. We took first, so we're really happy that way. This afternoon we had a lot of problems. Kit was to the quarterfinals, but we broke transmission. We just got tranny all done. Come in, now this happens. So we're going to have to go home. we got a week off. We're going to have to just put it back together and get ready again. With news like this, what advice do you have to give to a potential monster truck driver out there? Don't buy one. Sell it. No. <laughs> we have we carry a spare motor with us. That's the best thing. Carry as many spare parts as you can, Chris. You know you're going to use them. Mike Wine, get, get to work on that truck. Thanks. Mike Wine and the Jersey Outlaw. You can see him again, I'm sure, right here. Still a tough break, and you can see the look of disappointment on the fans' faces. They were hoping for at least either a Pennsylvania or New Jersey representative to go into the semifinal round. But as it is, we've got four killers that will advance to round number two. There's a look at the fireball that put Mike Wine out, but the action will get wilder. Don't you dare go away.